This is of vital importance to the believers, and we've mostly lost this, the idea that Scripture is the words of God, that God owns them, that they belong to Him, that He's the curator of them, that He's the originator of them, and that He preserves them throughout all of mankind, that it will be preserved. What did he say? He said, not one jot or one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass away from my words, plural, till all these things be fulfilled. He said, heaven and earth would pass away, but not one jot or tittle. Christ is serious about scripture, and here's the problem. We began to question scriptures about a hundred years ago pretty seriously. Is is scripture accurate or is it translated wrong? That became a question. The problem is that it destroys the authority of scripture. It doesn't, it's not necessarily that you're changing the information when you have a, we have what, about 500 English Bibles now. It's not that you're changing the information. The problem is that you've removed the authority. I like a guy named Jordan Peterson. He's a very intelligent, uh, uh, philosophical, I don't know, psychologist. I like watching his, his arguments. They're legal, they're intelligent, they're laid out well. And he's got a few, and he's not a, he's not a believer. He's got a few... Uh, uh, things that he, that he goes through of the Bible, the uh, book of Exodus, Abraham, so forth, that he talks about. And it's interesting for me to see some of it. At the same time, it's heartbreaking because this man is deeply, deeply sad. He's talking about the value of life, about, what, about, about the reason behind life. And he's talking about Abraham. And he, and he says, well, this story is very important because... You know, it has this truth and this truth about seeking adventure and leaving your home and about uh, this, this conflict in your life and that conflict in your life. And he has all this information that he draws from the scripture. And from that information, he informs himself of, of the way he should walk, but he doesn't believe that it's written by God. He doesn't believe in the authority of it. So as he talks about the value of it, he misses the fact that Abraham was a was the father of a nation that produced Christ, which produces salvation, which gives me life eternal, which gives me hope and peace and comfort. And he misses the peace and comfort. Why? Because he doesn't believe in the authority of the Scripture. He believes that the Scripture holds true facts, but he doesn't believe that those true facts originate from God Almighty. He believes they originate from man. And he talks about, well, this changes over time, and this changes, and this is a story. If Scripture is a, if it is in question in any way, then where does our authority stop? I've heard homosexuals talk about the scripture in, in uh, the New Testament. It says uh, that, that God gave them over to reprobate mind, men working with men, that which is inconvenient. Talk about homosexuals. And they'll say, well, the better translation of this is pedophilia. That's what that means. It's, it's a better translation. Well, who are you to say it's not? How can you say that's not the right translation? You can say, well, my Greek says this or that. Their Greek says this or that. Well, the oldest and best translations are, but how do you decide what the Greek says? You understand the problems. If we call in question the scripture and say, I don't believe that it's correct and I need to correct it. If at any point when I'm teaching, I say it would be better said, God, or it should be written this way then I become the authority. The problem is that when I become the authority, I take away the patience and the comfort of the scripture. I remove the understanding that God wrote this. For instance, if I'm driving home from work and I get a phone call, I answer it. My wife says, honey, I've got something amazing for you when you get home. Hold on, baby. I'm flooring it. I'm coming home right now. I don't know what it is, but I want it. I'm coming. Why? Because she's my wife and I trust her. I have faith in her, right? If at the same time I get a phone call, I answer the phone and it goes, hello, I am from Dreams International. I have a special gift for you. No thanks. Beep. Why? Because they don't have the authority she's got. They don't love me. I don't believe them. I don't think that they have something special for me. Same promise, different authority, different source. If the source of scripture is man, if man wrote it, if man preserved it, if man translated it, if man keeps it, man messed it up, where's the authority? Where is the right for me to say, thus saith the Lord, and rest in that? Instead, I go, 
thus saith this professor or that professor, and it loses authority. Now, most believers believe in the basic authority of Scripture, and that's good, but we've lost the faith. We've lost the faith that God preserved the Scripture. And I want to show you something that is pretty exciting to me about Scripture. 15.4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So he quotes the book of Psalms and says, Psalms was written for you guys, so that you would have hope. That's why he wrote it. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others, which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Man, that's a lot of hope. That's a lot of comfort. That's a lot of, of knowing who God is. But how do I know? Jesus, at the, at the resurrection of Lazarus, came up. Lazarus' sister is just decimated. Master, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. What did Jesus say? He looks at her and he goes... I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Believest thou this? Do you believe it? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. I believe in the resurrection life. Why? Because Jesus said so. Because I have faith in the word of God and what he said. Now, if I call it into question, I become a Sadducee. That's what the Sadducees were about. We don't believe in the resurrection. Why? Because they took things allegorically. They started shifting things. They started changing things. If I can change what the scripture says, then I can shift it and shift it and shift it. Now, I don't want to. Most people don't want to. But you understand the necessity of the authority of scripture. It's where we have hope. Jesus said, not one jot or tittle, not one comma, not one period, not one little piece of my words will pass away till heaven and earth do. Do you believe that? If you do, then where is it? Where are his words? Well, they're in the original manuscripts. Great. Where are they? Can you produce them? Because he said they would not pass away. So where are they? God's preserved his words continually. And it's, I'll show you. It's exciting. It's scripture. 1 Thessalonians 4.18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's what they're there for. Paul, this is Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Who promised? Right? Read the sentence. It says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto God. So God promised before by his scriptures. So did Moses promise or did God did David promise? Remember, he just quoted it in chapter 15. He quoted, he quoted Psalm 69.9. Did David promise that the Messiah would come, or did God promise? Well, God promised. Well, then how is it that David wrote it down? Because God used David to make a promise. But God stands behind that promise. Scripture is something that God takes authorship of. He owns it. Not, not the person that penned it. He owns it. Romans, is it written by Paul or is it written by someone else? I've read the arguments. Well, we don't think Paul penned Romans. Somebody else penned, Timothy penned Romans. Well, no, God did. And who's the author of it doesn't make a lot of difference. Galatians 3.8, And the scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. This is cool. Who preached to Abraham? Read the sentence. Who preached to Abraham? The scriptures did, right? The scriptures preached to Abraham and told Abraham the gospel by saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. It's what the scripture says. Where is that found? Genesis 12.1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Who said it? The scriptures did. Do you know when the scriptures were written? You know when, when the book of Genesis was written? 430 years after the Lord said to Abraham, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The scriptures preached the gospel to Abraham because the scriptures, the word of God, it doesn't matter if it's written down or not. 
It doesn't matter if it's in a book or a scroll. It doesn't matter if it's chiseled into stone. It doesn't matter if it's if it's an airplane flies over and makes a smoke and, and writes it down. The scriptures belong to God. They're his words. They're never anything but his words. And if they're not his words, they're not scripture. Scripture belongs solely to the words of God. And it tells us this in the New Testament. Check this out. First Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Much ado is made about the word inspiration. God breathed. That's, that's the, the, the literal we could use. Inspira inspired by God breathed. God said the words of God spoken, breathed out. Now, it has become, it has become passe to stand up and to hold up a Bible and say every word of this is true without exception. There is no exception to the, to the, to the perfect, inerrant, unerring word of God. Every word is true. It's become passe. But you know, if I stand up and say, I believe that we'll be resurrected someday, that people don't have a problem with it. Why? Why could we have a problem with the idea that God could preserve his word through languages, that he could have it in Gaelic and French and German, they could have it in English and, and Spanish? Why do we have a problem with that? But we don't have a problem with the resurrection. Think about it. A guy dies at sea in 512 AD, right? He goes down to the bottom. He's eaten by shrimp. The shrimp are eaten by groupers. The groupers are then eaten by sharks. The sharks then die and they're eaten by birds. The birds fly to Amazon, fall down. They're eaten by, I don't know, monkeys. The, the monkeys live around, they die, and they are eaten by snails. The sna Where's the body? How's God going to resurrect that? Because he's God. If he said, I'm going to resurrect him, then he's the resurrection of the life. Listen, he doesn't have to do anything. He has to say it. Be resurrected. That body comes back together. Where does it come from? Who cares? He made it to start with. And look, his words hold together DNA. They hold together the, the gluons that, that keep the, the atoms from splitting apart. That's the word of God. If he says, let there be a Nathan, the Nathan appears. What if God made a code? And put it in my body, something that controls everything like DNA. And then he put timestamps on it. And he downloads that. And he, and he says, come back. We can understand that. We can grab a hold of that. And God says, I'll preserve my scripture throughout the rest of time until heaven and earth passes away. Yeah, but not in translations. Only in the, he couldn't do it in the translations. It's a, it's a silly lack of faith. Second Peter 1.20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. There isn't a private interpretation of scripture because God wrote it with intent. God designed it with intent. God had something to say and say it. And said it, and you don't get to decide what it is. It's his. He owns it. It's his, it's his domain. Second Timothy 3.17, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. The idea of scripture is that we would not be weak in the faith, but we'd be built up in the knowledge of God, strong, filled with patience and comfort. When we give up the authority, it doesn't matter if we're giving up the information or not. When we give up the authority of Scripture, we give up the certainty that comes with the promise. Now the promise is no longer certain. It's a, it's a sad thing that we've, as the church has, have done, as Christians have done across the world in the last, last hundred years, that we've given up the certainty of Scripture. I've said before, I almost don't care what translation you pick. I mean, hopefully not the Pigeon Bible or the you know, the, what is it called? The Message Bible or, it's one of those. But I almost don't care what you pick and hold it up and say, this is the inspired, perfect word of God and it can correct any other book on earth. I almost don't care because it's the authority behind it that matters. It's the authority. But you know, in, in this Bible that I'm reading, it has different words than any other English Bible. It's different. And if it's different and not the same, they're not both correct. 
When I get to the book of Revelation, this says, he that taketh away from the words of this book, his part will I take away from the book of life. Another translation says, his part will I take away from the tree of life. They're not both right. They're not both scripture. One of those is an error because it's not a tree in a book. It's one or the other. Those are both proper nouns. They're both names. They can't both be right. Trust God that he's kept his word. And if you trust him that he's kept his word and you start searching for it, God, where is it? Is it in, is it in Gaelic? Because if it is, I'm going to learn Gaelic. Is it, is it in only in Hebrew? Is it only in Greek? Because if it is, I'm learning your language. Or is it, have you preserved it in multiple languages? And if you have, which one is correct? And seek it. And if you do, you'll find it. 